Well, we get to, to how, the, how the album was recorded in a minute, but how do you start writing a song? Is it on piano? Is it uh, with words? How, how, how does a song like Discovery, how does it start? Uh, it, it's usually it uh, uh, starts with by my when I'm with my synthesizer. Okay. Uh, I have an uh, organ synthesizer, mm -hmm. so it, it usually starts with me playing. And then uh, if I find a pattern that speaks to me, then I just repeat that pattern mm -hmm. until it grows into something else. And that's usually how I how I build songs. And then if I feel an urge to sing on top of those patterns, uh, I do. But it doesn't. It doesn't happen all the time. Okay. So. So well, because the the uh, album it is uh, like you said very dra uh, dramatic. There's there's some dramatic elements. It's. Uh, I thought it was quite dark. I'm not sure how how you saw it, but is your mood important when when you write? The mood you're, you're yeah, I, the the mood is very important, uh, f especially like when when I come to the miraculous place, mm. I have a certain I get into a certain mood okay. depending on what places I visit in that place. Mm. So I wanted to capture the moods and 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 the atmospheres of these places instead of like telling a correct story uh, mm. or like a linear story about what has really been going on there. So it has been a lot about capturing a mood. Okay. Uh, what was that mood or is that too...? It's very abstract, okay. but I, I see it usually, I, I try to visualize the place and by visualizing I start to remember and mm. I, then I, I start to, to feel. It can be different, different moods, dif different things, different colors and different textures. And then when you play these songs um, in the studio or, or by yourself, do these textures, these colors, do they come back to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I've had some textures that's be, that has been followed like on each track and certain, like, it's going to sound... <laughs> no, that's fine. Strange, but I had uh, had an image of of bar bark, like okay. uh, tree bark, mm -hmm. uh, during the whole recording process, and to capture the sound of mm -hmm. tree bark, not by recording it, but but in a in a musical interpretation mm -hmm. of bark. So yeah. No, no, that makes sense because mm. well. Go, go, going back to then to to your uh, father, who was a visual and audio uh, artist, is is music a, a very visual thing for you as well? A very what? A, a visual thing. Visual thing. Um, yeah, I as a, sometimes it I think it depends on how focused okay. I am. Uh, it it is very demanding music, so you need to listen very carefully, mm. uh, and. If I manage to get into to uh, to a place, if I mm -hmm. if I if I or if I manage to to focus enough on on the music uh, and just kind of let myself loose to it, um, I can definitely visualize some things, different things. Does this uh, can you make this happen, or does this just occur? In in my music or in, in, in your general? Own music. Uh, well, for me, yes, of course. When I when I when I when I play something, I play it for maybe a purpose. Okay. Uh, and when I feel that I kind of achieved the purpose, then then I stop playing it. Then I record it. Uh, and if I feel that I didn't achieve the purpose, then uh, I try again. So, but I, I can't speak for, for anyone else. Sure. I have my images and, and someone else might listen to the songs and, and, and feel differently and uh, experience the songs differently than I do. Mm -hmm. is, is it difficult then to pinpoint when you've kind of achieved what you wanted out of a song to, to kind of say, okay, now this song is finished? Um, uh, no, 
I don't. I I don't think so. Okay. I used to. I. I I think I'm pretty. I know <laughs> when I'm finished with with a song. Uh, of course, I can have like when I when I'm in a recording process, I can mm. have doubts about the arrangements, and I can finish something, and then I might have questions about my own making, like oh, could I have done it that way, and could mm. the arrangements been different, but not 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 so much maybe about the song structure, but but that tends to change when I play the songs live okay. because that's when I kind of discover that you can add more things to the songs and you can add more parts to the songs and you can expand some parts in the songs as well. So that's why I'm, I'm looking forward now to release this record so I can come out and play on it uh, live. Okay. Well, you, you mentioned the recording process and I'm gonna pronounce this incorrectly, I, I think, but you use the acousticum pipe organ in uh, Pitea? Yeah, Piteo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to try. I'm not even going to try. Um, what, what made you decide to go there to record the album? Um, uh, I, in 2012, when I released Ceremony, I got an invitation from Acousticum mm -hmm. and they wanted me to come and play there, uh, do a live concert. Um, on on this pipe organ, and it was just new. They had, uh, uh, they I think it was finished like 2012, and inaugurated. Uh, and then that same year, they, I got this invitation, and I didn't know then what organ it was. So I looked it up, and uh, I realized that it, they are asking me to play on one of the largest <laughs> organs in Scandinavia. And I had just put out Ceremony, and Ceremony was the first day of the re recording of Ceremony, that was the first day I played a real pipe organ. So I didn't feel ready to, to say yes to a live concert with my whole band. I didn't know if I could pull it off. Uh, so I, I said, no, thank you, I'm not ready, but uh, I'd love to come there one day. Mm. And then I kept con contact with them, and once I had the material for this record finished, I, I think this place was the first place that kind of popped into my, my, my mind. Well, what for you is, is the biggest difference in playing on, on, on such a massive uh, pipe organ and, and playing on your own uh, My synthesizer. synthesizer. Uh, well, I mean, you, you have... When you play on a pipe organ, you also have the space. So you play with the room and you play with acoustics in a totally different way than you do when you have headphones in a synthesizer, where the sound is very, what do you say, synthetic and same all the time. Of course, you can change the sounds, but the, there are no acoustics except on the ones that the synth is creating. But, um, but in a place, where there's a pipe organ, there's usually a lot more possibilities as well to change the sound and to adapt the sound to, to your own will and, uh, and control it in another way, different way than you can with the synthesizer. And yes, and the acoustic element is very, I think, inspiring thing to have when you, when you write music. How much of the record was already finished when you went to Pitea to record? Uh, uh, all of the songs except the title track, The Miraculous, was finished. And I wasn't, uh, my intention wasn't to record The Miraculous, mm -hmm. but the day uh, of the song, The Miraculous, mm. but the day when we recorded the pipe organ, uh, it, that, that recording day went really well, so I had like two spare hours in the evening. And then I had this old melody and I had this old text. Um, and I said to Philip Lehmann, the producer, I, I want to try this song and I don't have the arrangement and I don't know how I will play it, but let's just press record and see what comes mm -hmm. out from it. So that that track is an improvisation. Okay. Yeah. So uh, 
and and the voice melody and the voice lyrics uh, is not. They 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 were there from 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 previous. Right. Yeah. But was the did you know you wanted to call that song the miraculous then the empty album? I didn't know anything about okay. that track w while I was recording it. I thought the miraculous was a very funny uh, title uh, to the because the the old the text that I had was about um, like the fear of growing old and 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 losing your present self to nostalgia. Mm -hmm. And then I thought it was so funny that that, that concept of the song was really very, um, uh, con con what do you say, Contra con contradictory? Contradictional. Contra yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to, 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 to the process of the recording, where, which was an improvisation and where, where I was like 100% focused and 100% totally in the presence. Mm. So I just thought that The Miraculous was like a, a nice, uh, nice way to, 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 to title a track, the meaning that you can kind of, even if you can find like, okay, this is going to sound cheesy, mm -hmm. but you can find like a miracle even in the most like deceptive of places. Mm -hmm. Because well, you, you mentioned the word nostalgia, and uh, well, the, the kind of the, the inspiration for for the album was a, a place from your youth. So was it? I, I don't think it's 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 so much about okay. my youth. In one way, it is, but it, this record is more about how I see that place today okay. and how I experience that place today and how some of these stories have lingered on to, 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 to my today life. Mm. And there are some places and some stories that I haven't included on this record because I, I, I'm not as attracted to them that I was when I was a kid. But uh, this is more about my view on this place today and, and my lingering fascination for this place. It doesn't seem to disappear. It's, I think like my, my family, they fed me with fantastic, fantastical stories about this place okay. for such a long period of time. So even though I know that some of these stories are false, uh, I still have this very mm, fantastic uh, idea of the place. Okay. Mm. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.